During this demonstration, we will learn how to build a script that includes several scenarios that run consecutively. This uh, lab builds on what you've learned in the previous lab on correlations. We will take an advanced realistic scenario a step further by applying your new knowledge of thread groups, assertions, and so on, with additional skills such as incorporating a CSV file. You will also learn about and apply a throughput controller and a logic controller while incorporating a bean shell sampler. Let's first go ahead and save our test plan. And this time I'm just going to name it as JMeter Lab 1 hyphen 7 Complex Scripts. First, we will learn how to configure a JMeter test that applies multiple throughput controllers. Let's check the run thread groups consecutively checkbox and go back and add a thread group to this uh, test plan. Let's set the number of threads to 10, the ramp up period to 10, and check the loop count forever checkbox. And also check the scheduler checkbox. Let's set the duration to 600. This value configures the test to run for 10 minutes. Now let's modify the test throughput with a throughput shaping timer. The throughput shaping timer will limit the throughput of the test to 5 hits per second for the first 5 minutes. After 5 minutes, the test will ramp up to 10 requests per second until the end of the test. Let's go to Options, Plugin Manager, and enable the throughput shaping timer. As you can see, the throughput shaper timer is already uh, listed in the Install Plugins tab for me, and the checkbox is checked as well. This indicates that the timer is already installed in the JMeter. If you do not find it here, you might as well find it in available plugins and install it from there. Let's uh, go back to our thread groups and go ahead and add a throughput shaping timer to it. Let's add two rows to the request per second. In the first, let's start the RPS to about five. And in the first end, let's put the number as 10, or maybe 5 in this case. Let's add the duration to 300. In the second row, let's go ahead and add our start RPS to 10, and the end RPS to about 10 again. And the duration is going to be 300. Let's go ahead and set the throughput controllers now. Uh, throughput controller allows you to create tests that imitate virtual users completing specific tasks to test the performance of a website. Uh, for example, you may want to test the performance of an e-commerce site in a realistic scenario and show about a thousand concurrent users accessing the website in a realistic manner. You may assume that 30% of the users are currently logging in, 20% of the users already logged in and busy adding items to their cart, and 40% of the users are browsing and searching through your products, and 20% are logging out. In this example, a throughput controller could imitate this behavior to thoroughly test the performance of the site. Now let's add a throughput controller that sends about 10% of the test plan requests to the BlazeMeter demonstration registration webpage and signs up the users. Click Thread Group uh, and add Logic Controller. Throughput Controller. The Throughput Controller uh, name is going to be Throughput Controller 10%. We also want to verify that the Percent Executions option is checked. And we want to enter 10 in the throughput field. The throughput value sets the throughput at 10%. Now let's add an HTTP request to this controller.
Let's add the server name as blazedemo.com. And make sure that we're sending in a GET request and HTTP be the default port uh, protocol, I'm sorry. And let's set the path to register. Now let's add a cookie manager to this controller. So let's go back into our HTTP request and go ahead and add an HTTP cookie manager. Let's accept the default values and add one row to the user-defined cookies. Let's name it as the XSRF token. And also enter dollar token in the value field. Let's add a simple data writer listener to download all page content and save it off to a file. To do that, let's right click your HTTP request and add a listener to it by the name simple data writer. The simple data writer listener can be used to write the data from a request to a file. We're going to write it to a file by the name pagecontent.txt. Now we're going to go ahead and configure this data writer and enable the save response data, XML. Now let's also configure the advanced tab of the HTTP request. Let's enable uh, retrieve all embedded resources. This will include all embedded resources when downloading page content. Let's also modify the HTTP request to identify unique users. This will ensure that each user that is registered for the BlazeMeter demo is unique, no matter how many engineers or threads are used to run the script. Let's go back to the basic tab and add five rows to send parameters with the request section. Now in the first uh, row, I'm going to add the name as name. The name that I'm going to pass is Jane Smith, followed by a universally unique identifier. This you've used uh, in the past uh, videos as well. In the second, I'm going to go ahead and put in the name as company. The company is going to be BlazeMeter. In the third row, I'm going to give off the name as email. And in the email as well, I'm going to go ahead and use a UUID just to get a unique email ID every time. In the fourth, I'm going to enter a password. I'm going to put a static value there. And then I'm going to add password confirmation. So that's done. Let's now configure the JMeter test that applies a logic controller and a bean shell sampler. Elements such as the bean shell sampler add functionality to JMeter scripts that are not available in JMeter by default. A bean shell sampler allows you to add scripting language and is similar to Java in that, that it enables you to do more with basic JMeter elements. Uh, it would be extremely difficult to complete these tasks in JMeter without a bean shell sampler. Now to see a demo on this, we will send a request to blazedemo.com with a wait time between 500 milliseconds and one second, occurring between, between each iteration with an average wait time of about 750 milliseconds. So let's go back into your thread group and I'm going to add the throughput controller into it one more time. And I'm going to set this to throughput controller 50%. This throughput controller will address 50% of our requests. We will verify that the person executions is selected and I'm going to set the throughput va field value to 50. This value sets the throughput to 50%. Now I'm going to go back and right click this throughput controller and I'm going to go ahead and add an HTTP request into it. 
and the seven names going to be blaze demo again. And to uh, configure a delay, I'm going to go ahead and add a uniform random timer to this HTTP request. And I'm going to set the random delay to a maximum of 250 and the delay offset to about 750 milliseconds. The result of setting a random delay maximum of 250 milliseconds and a constant delay offset of 750 is that the maximum delay will not be longer than one second and the minimum delay will not be less than 500 milliseconds and the average delay will be about 750 milliseconds. Now let's submit the, a request to the website. We will set the tested loop 30 times, read a CSV file, push the resulting log, I'm sorry, resulting content into a log and then apply a command line parameter that determines if it's necessary to loop again. Let's go ahead and right click our thread group and add another throughput controller to it. Let's set this as throughput controller 30%. This throughput controller will address 30% of our requests. We will verify that percent executions is selected and I'm going to set the throughput to 30. Now let's add a white controller to your throughput controller. Let's enter a script here in the condition function. Right, this is what your function is going to look like. Applying this function will allow the loop to run 30 times unless the color is red. When the color is red, the function will exit the loop. Now let's also add a counter to the throughput controller. So let's go back into a white controller and add a counter. Let's enter one in the start field one in the increment field and set the reference name as counter. Now the next thing we'll do is go ahead and create a CSV file for colors that will be used by the white controller function. I'm going to simply create a notepad file for this. So that's created and I'm going to go ahead and save this file into the same folder as my JMeter scripts and I'm going to call it colors.csv. Now let's go back into your white controller and let's add a CSV dataset config to it. Let's set the name to uh, colors.csv that we've just created. And set the variable name to color. When we will execute this test, the line of colors.csv file that we've just created will be read one by one. We will use a bean shell sampler to push the content of the line currently being read to the log. Let's go ahead and see how we do that. We're going to go back into white controller and we're going to add a sampler into it by the name bean shell sampler. And in the script section of it, I'm going to go ahead and add a log info. So this is what it looks like. Now let's add a dummy sampler to our test. So let's go back into a white controller and go and add a sampler, dummy sampler. The name of this sampler is going to be a function which uses a property called instance ID. So that's what the name is going to be. Uh, this step will push the content of the current line being read uh, from the CSV into the log file. Now let's add another throughput controller. Let's go back to our thread group and add a throughput controller here. We're going to set this throughput controller to 10%. And now create another CSV which is going to be used in the white controller function. This CSV is going to have all numbers 1 to 10 across different rows. And I'm going to go ahead and save this off uh, into my JMeter script for
folder again and I'm going to call it numbers.csv. Now with that done, let's go ahead and add this CSV dataset config to the throughput controller. And I'm going to set the file name to numbers.csv that we just created and the variables to number. Now let's go ahead and add a bean shell sampler to the test. So I'm going to go back to the throughput controller and add a bean shell sampler to it. Now I'm going to go ahead and add a script here which will write to a new CSV file called new numbers.csv and it's going to go ahead and write the number variable it's reading from numbers.csv plus one for each loop of this test run. This is what the script looks like. Now let's go ahead and add a view results tree listener to the test and then run the test to view the results. So let's add it on the bean shell sampler. Save the test and go ahead and run it. Please note that uh, in the test results, each throughput controller is an independent mini exercise. To verify that each step was completed correctly, copy the contents of each throughput controller to a new JMeter script under a standard thread group and run it as a separate script. This completes the demonstration. Thank you for watching.